So gerrymandering has been a huge concern to me for quite some time now because the GOP is a minority party, but in spite of that fact, they still have an unfair advantage because of our biased political system. And all that they needed to do is gerrymander themselves a couple of extra seats and they would be virtually guaranteed to win at the end of this year. But most states now have redrawn district lines and it doesn't look as bad as we previously thought. Like, don't get it twisted. The GOP still has an unfair advantage, but it's not as biased as it was previously, which is surprising considering looking at the way that some states controlled by Republicans redrew district lines, you kind of expected them to just gerrymander the country into oblivion. But at least according to one report, it doesn't seem that bad, and by the skin on their teeth, Democrats seemed to actually have avoided a complete disaster when it comes to gerrymandering. Now, that's not to say that Democrats are going to win in 2022, because at the end of this year, I still think it is overwhelmingly likely that the GOP is going to wipe them out, and the report even says that, but when it comes to gerrymandering, not as bad as everyone was expecting, at least so far. So Greg Sargent of the Washington Post explains the long awaited, long feared gerrymandering apocalypse of 2021 has not materialized for Democrats after all. Throughout last year, many analysts and panicked Democrats concluded that Republicans would win the House in 2022 because of their outsized control over the redrawing of district lines. Some suggested Republicans could take the House on the strength of extreme gerrymandering alone, but that conventional wisdom just took a big hit with the release of a new analysis by the Cook Political Report. It concludes that the redistricting wars are shaping up as a wash and that the map may be somewhat better for Democrats than during the past decade. The analysis finds that in the 34 states that have completed redrawn House district lines thus far, President Biden would have carried 161 of 293 districts based on the 2020 vote totals versus 157 under current lines. Now, there's a couple of really important caveats here. Not all states have completed the process, so we don't know what the final map will look like, but they're basing this report on two-thirds of states that have completed their redistricting process. So we don't know that. Also, another caveat is that it's still a map overall that's biased in favor of the GOP, but it's just slightly less biased than it was before. And even with these changes, still based on the political climate, if Democrats don't deliver, they still very likely will lose at the end of this year. They still have to do more like pass voting rights reform and whatnot. But when it comes to gerrymandering, it doesn't look as bad as people previously anticipated, which is encouraging because as much as I despise both parties, I still think that we have to have the most unbiased political system as we possibly can have, which is why I don't think that partisan actors should be redrawing district lines. This should be a duty that nonpartisan, uh, independent commissions commissions conduct based on demographic changes, not based on how somebody can like create an advantage for themselves and their party. It, that that's absurd to me. But let's get to uh, what Cook says about this because their insight here is actually really interesting. A Cook political report with Amy Walter analysis finds that in the completed states, Biden would have carried 161 of 293 districts over Donald Trump in 2020, an uptick from 157 of 292 districts in those states under the current lines. Nationwide, Biden carried 224 of 435 seats. And if the Democrats were to aggressively gerrymander New York, or court strike down GOP-drawn maps in North Carolina and or Ohio, the outlook would get even better for Democrats. However, the partisan distribution of seats before and after redistricting is only one way to gauge the process because Democrats currently possess the lion's share of marginal seats. Estimating the practical effect of new lines in 2022 still points towards a wash or a slight GOP gain. But ultimately, again, we'll have to wait and see. Now, the question is why? Why is it not turning out as bad as people had previously expected? And it's because the GOP, rather than trying to aggressively gerrymander new seats for themselves, they're trying to shore up seats that already exist. So if they see that a Republican is vulnerable or they may become vulnerable over the next few years due to demographic changes, they're trying to just make sure that that seat is more safe rather than giving themselves more uh, seats. So they're kind of going for the long term over the short term advantages that they may gain by just being super aggressive, because that could come back to bite you in the ass. If you spread yourselves too thin, you could end up uh, losing seats in a couple of years. Um, so it's, you know, again, I don't want to 
give people this assumption that, you know, it's over and Democrats now they they did it. They're going to win. Mm, no, they're still overwhelmingly likely uh, going to lose at the end of this year. In spite of this, it's just that now, you know, there's not as big of a chance as or I should say maybe the bloodbath that we're all anticipating won't be as bloody as previously thought uh, again they say it's a wash so it's it's not necessarily you know something that is going to make a huge difference it's just not going to be as negatively impactful as people had previously thought which is encouraging but again wait until you kind of like form an opinion on this until we see all of the states and then we read those analyses but i mean just meanwhile it's kind of good news that i didn't expect so uh you know i thought i'd share it with you it's it's a little bit encouraging that our political system is only uh super duper fucked and not super duper duper fucked so cool